the topic we're doing is how to efficiently and effectively improve, which is basically it's so important because not everyone has a bunch of time to play. Like you really, you can't play every day, so you got to make the most of your time. And a lot of people end up wasting their time or not like using it to the best of their ability. So then they end up they end up slacking, and then it takes years and years and years to get, to get better. But some people improve way faster, and it's because they know how to do this. They know how to improve to like the fastest way and the most effective way. Because I know everyone has a time where they don't know what to do to get better. They're just, like, playing mindlessly. They just keep playing. You're like, why aren't I getting better? I swear I practice every day, blah, blah, blah. But, like, you just don't get better. You don't know what to do. You don't know the steps. So I'm here to teach you the steps. So, seriously, like, I followed these steps. A lot of other people did. Junior Z, Jumbo Jack, Skyler. I helped I helped teach them all these already. And they use them. Very effective. Ronald, Kami. These, they all. This is basically a compilation of all the Smash 4 PR knowledge. Uh, on how to get good, so this is it. So can we see the first slide, Steven? Okay. So the first step is you got to be open-minded, and you got to be willing to grow because it's not about the short term; it's about the long term. That's the most important thing. With year one of Ultimate, baby game. You guys can be playing this game for four more years, easy. It's not a race, but you really want to be concerned with learning every time you play. So the first thing is be open-minded. People, like, I'll try to give them a strategy or something, and then they'll be like, oh, that won't work. I already tried it. That won't work. Or they'll be like, oh, just stop jumping there. And they'll be like, but if I don't jump, then I air dodge and they hit me anyway. But that's, they're just already not even open to the idea of trying it, and they don't, they don't even understand the full functions of it. So the main thing is you really want to be willing to try anything that anyone tells you because you never know. Like, you always want to give it a shot. So, uh, I mean, if anyone has any questions on that, I'll take it right now. So, uh... The second one, trust the better and experienced players, is is very, very, very important. It's very it's the same thing as being open minded, but a lot of times people don't realize the gap between players. Like, like I've been playing for four years compared to most people. Like, here I've been playing like two at ma at max, maybe three, and it's just like, it's like even though like you can win sometimes or some games, the gap in knowledge is insane. Like, and even that's the main thing about Smash is the steps is insanity. Like. Even though I'm, like, pretty good, then Skyler's, like, leagues are better than me. And then, like, I'm here, Skyler's here, and then Stroder's, like, fucking pass the roof, right? But then Stroder's, like, we'll still get farmed by, like, 20 other people, so it's, like, insane. But you really got to realize how little you know, because a lot of times you think you know more than you do when you're, when you're starting out. And then as you get better, you realize, oh, I didn't actually know anything. So, because even I still don't know everything. Like, it's, it's, it, gets, it's, it's, it just keeps going. And then the, next, the last one, the most important one, is to ask more in-depth and specific questions. So, I'm like, people ask, what do I do against this character? But that doesn't really give anything. Like, you could just look up a, a YouTube guide, right? You could just do anything that will teach you in five minutes. That's not really effective. You want to try to solve a specific problem. Like, say, you don't know how to, like, oh, I can't, j I can't ledge trap Ivysaur for some reason. Like, I don't know. Whenever Ivysaur's on ledge, I get hit by, like, ledge hop side B. Or let's hop near. I don't know what to deal with it. That's a good question. So you want to try to ask good questions. So what's up, Taco Waffle? Um, I mean, you can be experienced, and some people do know a lot, but are mechanically bad, or they they have a lot of game knowledge, and so yeah, I think some people are way better coaches than, but they don't they're not mechanically technically good enough to execute their own ideas, which is like. A lot of old, a lot of old, because, like, if you play any fighting game, you should have a, a lot of good knowledge. Like, a lot of Brawl players will still give you some of the best tips you can get, even though they don't even play this game. What's up, Katie Mac? The same way, right? Yeah, so it is so 
when you have to re- replicate a situation they're trying to give you advice on, like um, like the LBI Shield, for example, you want to just try to uh, look for the opportunities and friendlies to try to push it. You don't have to, like, fish for it. Like, don't just only sit there and shield waiting for up B. But every time you get the chance, go for it. Try to test yourself. And then all, and you can always just ask a friend for help. with Because like, a lot of things in Smash, if you actually practice them straight up, can be learned in, like, 10 minutes flat. But if you just practice them in friendlies, it'll take you, like, two hours. Because you only get to do it, like, once a game. Once or twice a game. But a lot of things can be grinded out and learned very, very quickly. This game is mechanically not very difficult. So once you understand the application of it, and the situation, then you can learn much quicker. All right, next slide, Steven. Okay, and here, this is uh, this is the this, this is what you need. This is the beef of it. All right, the improvement plan. Years have gone into this plan. This plan's so sick. Like, <laughs> it works. It works. It works. It works. I swear. I swear. So if you just, I swear, if you just keep doing this, you'll just be the best player in the world eventually. I swear. Okay. So the first thing is you gotta play in tournaments. You can't play in tournaments. Find a very serious, like you gotta play serious. You gotta try to win. So and then the second step, very important. You gotta learn what you did wrong, like why you were getting hit. And then you don't have to learn everything because it's impossible to do all at once. But just take a couple things. So, say so you just keep getting hit out of your, you keep getting ledge trapped. You can't get off the ledge. That's one thing you can learn. Take that. That's all you need. Next thing, next time you can go home. And then you can do step three. You can figure out how to fix the problem. So you can't. You keep getting lead shot by Belmont. You keep getting freaking down B forward smash, holy water forward smash. Don't know what to do about it. Somebody, some freaking master at that. Whatever. Um, yeah, you got. So you got to figure out how to solve the problem. And this is this is a very hard issue. I'll go into more depth later. I have a slide talking about each step. But you'll figure out how to solve the problem. Fourth step: solo practice to solve it. So. Even if the solution is very simple, like, oh, I just have to normal get ups later into the normal into the holy water, you should still practice it, get a feel for the timing, and know what you're doing. You should never try to do something for the first time in tournament. You should always at least very simple things, at least you should have it hundred percent down. Say you just need a tomahawk grab, practice it. Just do ten empty hop grabs, just practice it. Because once you get the muscle memory down, it's easier from there. And then so five, practice what you applied in friendlies. So this is when you actually go and you actually try to play against whatever character you're you're fighting or whatever abstract idea you're trying to fight. Like, oh, I can't deal with the rushdown. You actually try to fight those characters and then apply what you learned and see if you do any better. And then if your solution didn't work, then you basically circle back, figure to circle to step three, figure out a new a new way to solve the problem. But you got to realize that every problem, every solution you have, they have a counter because it's like you guys know how Smash works, like. Everything can be everything. It's not just like rock, paper, scissors. So, but you need to know how to beat one specific option. All right. So, any questions on the on the general plan, Felix? Yeah, like you won't be able to practice it. Yeah, so I have a slide on each topic, talking more in depth, and yeah, solo practicing is very difficult in Smash, so training one is garbage, we all know this, but um, there are some strategies I'm going to go into more depth about, I'll go into a little section about training mode, but a lot of stuff you do just have to have a friend help you with, it's basically the only way, but it can be learned very quickly, a lot of things can be learned very, very quickly, like not even 20 minutes, like just like... It's insane. You, just, you really got to find a friend to commit with. But, I mean, instead of playing friendlies, instead of playing Wi-Fi, you could just be doing that. And a lot of people, instead of doing this to efficiently solve a problem, they'll just be doing some brainless friendlies with, like, secondaries on, like, like whatever. Like, just wasting time. All right. What's up, Katie? Applying it. Yeah, so as you get better, you'll just be able to learn quicker and adapt way, way quicker. Like, it's it's crazy how fast you get at adapting. Because at the general level of the room right now, it takes way too long. Like, But eventually, you'll be able to adapt, like, instantly. But, I mean, you once you get an idea, you can usually try it. For me, personally, it takes about, like, one or two tries and friendlies, and I can usually start doing it. 
if I have an idea, I can usually just think about it. I'm like, mm, I'll try it next time. And then I, it might work. But, I mean, it, it'll obviously take longer. And you have to do more practice depending on what it is or, how, like, how easy it is for you to, to learn stuff. But everyone learns at their own pace. But you'll you'll eventually get better at learning, which is very, it's very stupid. If it's something very, if it's something very specific, like a like a very specific combo, it might just not come up. Like if you're just trying to do some flashy cool combo, you might just never have to. It just might the, the situation just might not come up where you have to even use it in a match. A lot of sets you just don't get to do whatever you wanted to do because it just the situation never came up. That's just how that's just how they played. But that's okay. I mean, you'll use it eventually as long as you keep the knowledge. All right. So, any more questions on this slide, or can I get deeper into the each step? Uh yeah, I can. I'll meet you in for a second. Um Yeah, so one thing that okay, so when Ultimate first came out, we learned that up out of shields were like broken, right? Y'all know. Every character, like every character seems to have a broken up out of shield. There's a problem. I was like, damn. I'm playing Skyler all the time, mashing up B, Game and Watch, Thor's over here with Cloud, he's over here with Belmont, it's like damn. But so I learned I was like, Okay, why do I solve the problem? So first I, you got to look at, I try to look at, okay, I can't hit their shield with, like, anything. So then my initial things was I'll just tomahawk grab them. So I just, I'll just so I practiced it. I tried, I practiced it. So I learned the problem. So I learned what I did wrong. I couldn't beat up out of shield, so I kept getting hit. And then I did step three, figure out how to solve the issue. I'll tomahawk grab them. And then step four, I practiced it. And I wanted to take it further because I want to do the best, most efficient. So... Even though it's something simple like tomahawk grabs, it can be very in depth, like the practice. It's like I was doing. Can we switch the gameplay real quick? There. I'll show you. I'll show you what I was doing. Like even though it's something simple as a shore hop land grab, you can make it much more optimized, and because you really need every frame. So here, let me see. What I was doing was I was doing short. I will do short hop, backwards, turn around, grab, to threaten the back air. But that's just an example of me like taking it. I actually tried to use number four and solo practice it, and then I tried to even optimize it as far as I could. So like I'll do. I'll show you the example right now. I do the fast fall and the turnaround. The turnaround is only one frame, and the fast fall saves like a couple more frames. And these are very small things that make the technique a lot harder, but they're even worth doing. They're still worth doing. So that's like an example. Like so, four. I learned. How, I practice the issue, and then I, I learned the, I learned the issue, and then I practiced it, and I just started applying it. So then next time I saw a shield instead of landing with Nair, because I'm Fox, you know they love that shit. I'll just grab him. Um, yeah, and then I, you, you got to use. You got to use what you practice in friendlies. So if you don't use it in friendlies, you will never use it in tournament. You'll be too scared. But eventually, it'll just become second nature, and then it's not. You don't have to think about it. That's just what you do when you see the shield. So then you really, it's really like breaking a habit or like learning new habits. Okay. Uh, next slide. So the first main step. Figuring out the problem. Okay, so most matches, it's figuring out the problem can be hard. Like a lot of times, you guys know, you lose a match, you don't even know why you lost. You just you just got bodied. You just lost. But you really should want to learn why you were losing. So most matches are won or lost over just one person doing like a few things. Like a lot of times I see a match, I'm like, damn, if this dude would stop normal getting up on that ledge, he wouldn't be losing right now. It's like that's basically it. Or I'll be like. Or it's like, man, if he just didn't, if he just had a better punish game, he'd be winning right now. It's very, sick. Like, usually it's a couple things that are stopping you from winning a set. Mm. And then, so at my level at least, or at higher levels, he's here. Okay, at higher levels, hi, Kami, you're late, dude. 
Tardy slip. Tardy slip. Okay. But, um, so at the, once you get good, you should be at the, be able to figure out why you're getting hit like instantly. So you get you you'll run in, get hit. You're like you. Sh I already know why I got hit instantly. I don't know about you guys. Like you guys can't. Can you do? Can you guys do that? Is that a thing? I actually don't know. Like when it's obvious, but like usually not, right? Yeah, so you want you really want to find out the specific reason you got hit. So, and then that can be hard to do in real time, but eventually that's the goal you want to get to. But in the meantime, you can do match analysis of your own recordings, your own replays, and that's way, that way you can slow it down and figure out why you like why you were getting hit. Yeah, because you got to know why, so you, you know, you, gotta, you realize that, like, why you're getting hit, though, like, you know that, at least you know the interaction's ready. All right, what's up, Katie? Yeah, you want to focus on what you were doing to get hit. So I'll have a, I have another slide. It's super in depth about match analysis. I'll go through later. I'm gonna do when during the practice session. I'm actually gonna have people come up and I'll do a match analysis live for them. So I'll help you guys all figure out what you're doing wrong later on. But yeah, we'll get more in depth into looking at your matches and learning how you were getting hit. Um, but a lot of time it's really just you gotta you gotta visualize the interaction. Like you have to break it down. Like a lot of times someone runs in. And they get hit by an aerial, and they're like, oh, I just ran in. And that, that's not specific. You want to know, like, oh, I jumped, but he read me, so he did an air-to-air, -air and I lost. Because he was, he was there before you. Yeah, it's always that they always know. It's usually like one or two things they know, and then that's enough. That's enough for it to be open and shut. All right, what's up, Gio? I don't do it much. Yeah. So a common problem is uh, people are just playing. They're playing so fast they can't even keep up with themselves. But that can't even be. That can be a good thing when the momentum's on your side, right? You'll just, you'll just be going. You're going super sane. You're just ending people. But sometimes, like, they're going too fast, you can't even keep up. So what you want to do is that you can practice uh, thinking faster, and you can do that by watching VODs. I can go over how to, how to practice that later. later. Um, so you can, you can, you basically, you have to either get your mental up, but sometimes, no matter who you are, like, it'll be, the game's going too fast, the pressure's too high, and then you got to focus on the gameplay, trying to defuse the situation. So a lot of things, like taking breaks, you can stall a lot in the game, stall that ledge, maybe wait on the angel platform, whatever you need to do to give yourself a break. But I think you, you should slow it down when you get the chance if you're feeling overwhelmed at any point. All right, Torch, I'll do you next, Felix.
Yeah, so that when when someone answers a, your question in a very broad manner, it's because you're not asking a very specific question. Like, what did you ask him? Like, why? Like, what am I doing wrong? Bad question. That's a, that's an example of not doing a specific question. Because you want to know, you want to look at an interaction you keep that that's failing, and you want to do that one at a time. Because the thing is, you're not going to be shorter. Like the advice they're going to give you, nothing they can give you, is going to help you win the next set. But you got to learn, take what you can. So you should learn the small, like the small but important things. Like getting walled out could mean anything. I mean, it means something, but it's not. It's very, it's pretty broad. It just means that you keep approaching, you can't get in. But you should ask more. Like, oh, uh, how do I deal with like? Every time I do a rising air, like an anti air, like how do I stop that? You, you want to ask like more specific, in depth questions, and then you'll get more specific answers that'll help you out more. All right. Um, just funny. Can you do the next slide? Yeah, replays are pretty much the only way to do it, even though replays kind of suck. But there's always it's a stream. We have stream like we have like five stream tournaments a week. So try to go to those, and then if not, you can do your own replays. But that's pretty much it for vods. Yeah, don't feel bad about saving replays tournament. It's kind of stupid, it's kind of cheesy, kind of corny. We all know it's kind of weird. Whatever, just do it. I mean, if you're really trying to, if you're really trying to get better, if you're really about that life, you'll get it done. Like, don't like no one really cares. Like, worry about yourself. Be selfish. Yeah, everyone knows that everyone's trying to get better. Like, we're all, like, it's a communal effort. What's up, Taco Waffle? Yeah, um, uh, yeah, if you don't want to do the phone recording, I don't know. Did Kami used to do this, right, with the Wii U? In Smash 4? Okay, so uh, some people used to bring their own setups and then request everyone to play on their setup for their tournament matches. And they would just save the replays, and they'd be on their own setup, so then they could take it home. So they don't have to record it in the venue. So you could always just bring your Switch, bring a setup. It helps everyone out, another setup. And you get to save your own replays. So, like, win-win. Yeah, bring setups to the arcade in. If you're going, just bring your setup. Why not? Yeah, you don't even have to have your own setup. You can just bring your Switch around, replace it with a tournament Switch, save the replays, take it out, replace it, and then you're good. You don't even have to stay at one setup the whole tournament. You gotta remember that you don't always have to approach, because people always try to. Some people just love to be aggressive, but some characters are just not worth approaching. Sometimes just have to, most of the time you don't want to be approaching. To be honest, like <laughs> if you're approaching, you're probably losing. Yeah. So you, re yeah, you really gotta realize that sometimes it's okay because patience is a virtue. 
Usually someone will just get more, less impatient than you and they'll just run in and do something stupid than you hit them. All right, uh, do you have a question? <laughs> all right, so. All right, what's up, Katie? Okay, so you want to you want to download a clip? Yeah, there's a website called Clipper, and you just take the Twitch clip, copy the link, paste it in Clipper, and then you download it. Clipper. I'll show you the website later. I'll show you the website later. All right. Um, so this side, how to figure out how to solve the problem. This is probably the hardest step because you have to actually like start theory crafting, start ask, start doing ideas, but mm, like and things are hard to practice. So like. Say you want to get better at ledge trapping, not really that many ways to practice it, right, by yourself. But one thing you can do is watch VODs of better players and look for specifics on how, how they do how they deal with it. So, like, say you, you're playing, like, whatever character, Pac-Man. They keep doing the hydrant. You don't know how to deal with hydrant. But then you could watch someone else play it, and then maybe they do something crazy. Like, they hit the hydrant before it comes out, disable the hitbox. You're like, wow, I didn't even know they could do that. So watching other VODs of better players, like top players, or even higher level players is very good to help you solve a problem if you don't really have, know how to deal with something. And then experimenting in training mode, super good tip is to play the character yourself. If you don't really know a character's like lag or you don't know how to punish a lot of moves, if you play them yourself, you can just see and feel it out. Like a lot, you know, a lot of times someone does a smash attack and then you're like, oh, I can punish that, and then it has no lag. But like, if you like, damn, how do I punish that? You can just play the character yourself. Look for all the look for all the moves that have lag that they do a lot, and then see if they have like startup lag or end lag, or if you know frame dead, if you know how to read frame dead, you can always check the frame dead on characters, and that'll help you solve problems like issues, like you don't know how to get past the ledge shop or something. And then ask for help. So most people who know a matchup or have been in the situation can give you good advice on how to solve it if you ask a very specific question. Like, say you can't deal with whatever, someone keeps spamming aerials on your shield, you don't know how to deal with the pressure, right? <laughs> but uh, you can ask, a, if you ask a specific po uh, question like that, you can get good help, and then that's a good jumping off point if you need help solving a problem. Yeah, so it's impossible to prepare for everyone. You can't know every matchup, obviously. So I think you have to be, be – but that's the thing. So tournaments are, are good because there's so many of them. So you go to a tournament, you lose, and then you go home, learn. So you lose to a character, go home, learn the matchup. Next time you don't lose to the character, rinse, repeat till you learn all the matchups. Like that bit. But obviously stuff's evolved. You have to keep relearning stuff. So that's, that's basically the situation. That's why the improvement plan works is uh, – you can just keep doing it over and over because even you're gonna fail, but you learn from your failures. You can't just learn. You can't just do everything at home and then never fail. You have to learn what you did wrong. Usually, someone has to show you what you're doing wrong in a match by beating your ass, and then you learn. <laughs> and then you go home, you learn it, and then you take it back, and then you and then you get them back. All right. Any other questions on how on how to solve the problem? Figuring out how to get past like whatever issues you're you're facing. Yeah, yeah, so that's good though. You watch the VODs of a top player doing it, and the thing is, you can mostly just copy what other players do for like specific situations, and that is the best way to do it. Like everyone would be, everyone wouldn't be doing that if it didn't work. So yeah, copy people. Like 
watch them and then learn what they do and then be like, oh, that's a good strategy and you take it. There's no shame in learning from other people. That's like how the meta progresses. You can also come up with your own stuff, but you also want to already know the ba- you want to know the foundation before you try to innovate yourself. But yeah, it's good that you watch the VODs and I can go over how to practice like specific things like that. I'll do a, I have a section on training mode and how to do stuff. I think it might be the next slide actually. Oh, Brandon, what's up? Yeah, so the first step is, because some people, they don't want to talk in tournament, because, like, I know sometimes I'm, like, zoning, like, I'm really, when I'm really focused on a tournament, don't talk to me, like, (laughs) sometimes it's, like, really very, very, very important, like, it's very serious, like, I don't want questions from anyone, I don't want to talk about anything, like, sometimes I'm just, like, I'm playing, or I'm, like, sitting over by myself, or I'm, like, taking a nap, or doing what I need to do to win, but you got to catch them at the good time, but... Remember, is the best, most, impo- most important thing if you want to get a good answer is to have a good question. Have a well-thought-out question and make sure it's specific. And most people will help you if they're, like, ready. But one thing is don't come up after five minutes of a set they just played. Give them five minutes after every set, even if they won. Because, honestly, sometimes I've beat some people and they played freaking, like, they played, like, Rob or something. I don't even care if I won. I still didn't have fun. I'm pissed. Right? I don't want to be friends with you. Like, you just played duck hunting against me. Like, I don't want to pe- talk to you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying like I, even if I won some, sometimes I win and I'm still pissed like I win I'm like bro why you picked all of them or like ugh are you even have, like why, we're trying to have fun like here why are you doing this to me okay but yeah give them a few minutes even if they win like a lot of times you lose you already asked your question instantly right but like I don't want to talk to you <laughs> like I just killed you like you're done but yeah give them like, a few minutes between sets and then usually if you have a well thought out question they will answer you I don't. Th- I can't think of anyone in Arizona who would like blow you off like that if they, if they were ready. And then if not, if you can't ask them that day, write it down and remember. And then literally, if you if you message anyone, they'll definitely answer right for sure, for sure. So if you just write down your question and then message it to them later, they will 100% answer. Like I don't know anyone who wouldn't answer that. But yeah, sometimes it's, it can be hard to catch them at a tournament. So usually after bracket, but even after bracket can be hard because some people get salty. You know how it is. Uh, yeah, okay, what's up, Katie? Yeah. Yeah, so one thing that's a very good point is the better players, the PR players, it's not their job to help you. Like, we're, you, you'll you learn to be selfish, and it's really, it's a community, but it's only one person wins a tournament. It's, a, it's we're there for, I'm trying, like, we're here for, like, when I'm in a tournament, if I'm still in bracket, I'm not playing friendlies with you. Unless, like, you're actually, like, one of the better players that I need to play with, right? Because when a better player plays friendlies with a lower level player, like, during bracket, they're essentially hurting themselves, right? I mean, they're not really doing anything wrong if they're just playing brain dead friendlies and it's like whatever. But I like to focus if it's a more important tournament, like not a, just a local. I don't like to play friendlies in bracket, and a lot of people don't. But usually after is a good time. Before is usually the best time, but people show up late. But and then yeah, and then Schroeder, 
probably gonna get back to you because that dude has the most fucked up sleep schedule on earth. Like, <laughs> on like that dude falls asleep at like seven a.m. and sleeps till like <laughs> wakes up at, like nine. So yeah, yeah, I'm serious. Okay, whatever. Enough about that. But, uh, <laughs> All right, see me the next slide, Steven? Okay, so this is the solo practice, right? The most important thing is do not waste your time. People go to a tournament, and then I see them playing secondaries. I see them not even secondaries, like random characters, like doing squad strike. Like, what are you doing? Like, tournaments used to be like once a week, very rare. You know, you couldn't even get to the tournament because you had eight dollars. Like, had to sell your copy a little bit, plant two to fucking enter the tournament, right? And then I see people going to tournaments all the time, wasting their money, wasting their time. You really got to make the most of it, guys, because you might as well. What's up, man? Okay. True story. Okay. No, like Wi-Fi can be good if you're actually playing. I'm just saying like brainless, like friendlies or brainless Wi-Fi. Yeah, Wi-Fi can be decent. I'm just saying, like, if you're not actually thinking about it, though, you know when you're just playing the play, you're like, there's no thought involved, you're not even you're just playing? Yeah, you know, it's like 1 a.m., you guys are, like, just bullying, like, you know, you guys know. And then, uh, specific practice or on specific problems is the fastest way to improve. So you always want to do one thing at a time. Go into training mode with a goal. If you're like, okay, I want to practice my whatever. I want to practice my, my, my air dodge angles. I want to practice my recovery. Do that. Set a timer. Do 10 minutes. Don't get bored five minutes in. Don't do it for, like, 10 tries and just start doing, like, whatever cool combo you saw ECM do. Like, I don't – stop that. That's a waste of time. You want to do – you want to make the most of your time. So practice specific stuff. So say, oh, I'm missing my narrow smashes. Go. Grind it out. 10 minutes. Easy. Solve your problems. And then you need to dedicate time practicing the solutions you came up with in the previous step. And then, yeah, I talked about this earlier, but the simple counterplay – you need to, it needs to be effortless, like, okay, if someone's chilling on a platform, I'll just land on a platform and grab them. But you still want to practice that in training, which is practice the action, because you never want to try to do something for the first time in tournament. Like, you should have already done it. Once you have the idea, it sh the execution should be easy. It should be as simple as just running up and dash attacking. Like, everything shouldn't require thought, because then you need to allocate your time. You need to allocate your brain energy, your mental energy into other things. So movement, doing executing, like, techniques like that, should be easy. Yeah, that's actually a great example, though. He realized that, like, okay, I couldn't deal with the, the rush down. He's always going forward. So then he learned that, okay, if you do an aerial drifting back, you're more likely to win a trade if two hitboxes collide. Because, yeah, if you're drifting back, okay, just a tip. If you're drifting back, you're way more likely to win interactions with hitboxes just because you're moving your hitbox back and just the way rangers work in Smash. But, yeah, so he had, he had the problem. He couldn't deal with me rushing him down. He thought about it, how to solve it, practiced it. And then next time he tried it, he did a lot better. So that's a simple improvement plan. Great example. But, uh, yeah, that's really it. That's really it. You want to practice it? Because even if it's simple, you want to you have it easy. But that was good. That was good. And then this is it. The practice of playing in friendlies. These friendlies, you don't need to win, okay? If you're trying to new ideas, you want to try You Because sometimes you have a lot of new ideas. You have, like, five new things you want to start trying. Go ahead and try them in a friendly. But don't worry about winning. Like it's you should be actually making the attempt to improve more than win. In these friendlies, there's two types of friendlies. But don't be discouraged if your idea fails. Sometimes you're like, oh, I have a good idea to Edgar Fox. I'll just go off stage. I'll do, 
I'll do like run under, up B, whatever. And then you're like, oh, you try it. It doesn't really work. Like it's not really effective. The hitboxes just don't work. You you keep getting hit out of it. That's fine. You can. There's always new problems. No, it's not like oh, it's unbeatable. It's broken. Nerf. Blah blah blah. I was playing a different character. Like you have to go back to the drawing board and try something. A lot of people do one solution, doesn't work that well. Pretty bad. Or they develop counterplay to it and they think it's over. They gotta pick up a new character. They need a Politana. Like they're like oh, I guess I'm picking up Joker. Like no no no. You gotta. There's always. There's pretty much always a solution even if it's a lot more difficult for some characters or for some situations but yeah people it's, don't be discouraged there's always usually another answer Yeah, yeah, that's a classic. No one, it's annoying, it's annoying, but you really gotta, when you're trying to get better, you're trying to develop the growth mindset I talked about earlier, you really have to shed your ego, shed everything. You gotta be selfish, you're there for, you're not not selfish so much, but you gotta concentrate on yourself. You gotta, you're, there, you're there mainly to help yourself, like, we all know, don't be insecure, blah, 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 don't, like, let people's, like, judgment, whatever. He pops off because he took a game off you in friendlies, whatever, at least he's happy, right? Like you know, you know, and you know to yourself, it doesn't matter. As long as he's happy, whatever. Like who cares? But you really, it it can be hard though. <laughs> All right, uh, I think that might be it. But is that, there's one more slide, maybe. Okay, go back, go back. That was it. That was it for the first session. Yeah, how much? How much? How much? So, so that was pretty much it for the first uh, for the first section, but uh, the improvement plan. Remember the plan. Do the steps. I swear it works. It's like it's, it's tried and true. But I'll take any questions on the plan right now. The first half. If anyone has any, what's up? If you can perform it effortlessly in tournament, like, you don't have to think about, like, oh, you know when, like, you're like, about to do your cool combo and you're thinking about it in your head? Like, that, that's one thing if it's, like, an advanced thing. But it should get to the point where it's as simple as I'm going to send that ledge and grab his normal get up. Like, it should be as easy as that. Yeah, once it's, once it's muscle memory, the action is muscle memory, and it's not like you have to actually think about each input, then you don't really have to practice it that much. I would still try it if you're messing around in training mode. I have another session talking about muscle memory practice. You should always keep your muscle memory up to date, but once you got it down, you can move on to something else. All right, any other questions? What's up, Ricky? Ball foop. <laughs> so it, there really is no priority because you're going to have to solve them all eventually, but you mainly want to focus on why you're going to hit most of the time and then whatever one, whatever thing you're doing the wrong the most, I would do first. So say you keep getting hit out of your initial dash, but you also keep getting shield grabbed. But I probably realize, oh, I'm getting shield grabbed for like 80% of each stock. Like that's that need that probably needs to go. So I'd probably prioritize that one first. Whatever's giving you, whatever's like hurting you the most.
Okay, so secondaries, I see more of a short-term solution. So say you have a problem with your main, you can't beat this character, you can't deal with this. You're like, oh man, I really cannot get in as like whoever I'm using. I'm using, I'm saying I'm using it's like Sonic. But then you're like, okay, screw that. I'll just pick Link and Camp. Like I'll just pick, t I'll just pick Young Link and Camp. I won't even try to go in. That does solve your problem, but you didn't really go through the steps to you didn't go through the steps to learn how to solve the problem. So you're not actually becoming a better player. You're really just making it easier. It's, I see secondaries is mainly taking the easy way out. You're just just not jumping over the problem. I mean, they can be good short term, like. They, you, you won the match, you won the tournament, like, you did whatever you needed to do to win, which can be good, but I think, moreover, like, it's more important to prioritize growth over the short-term results. So, and I think the fastest way to grow is by solo maining and sticking out all the issues with your main, because then it forces you to be more creative on the problem solving and not just completely switch to a different... If you can't solve a problem with the toolkit you have, don't just switch to a new toolkit, you can still do it. It should just be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, because th the way I think about it, yeah, my advice would actually be, t I would prefer, I, I'm i right or die. I think you just take the L with your main, honestly, because then you learn more. You learn more losing with your main than you do winning with a secondary or winning with a pocket in like an 8-2 matchup. I'll do, uh, Felix, your question right now. I'll do Felix, you, I can tell. Yeah, good point. Yeah. One thing I, I always tell myself is, I'm playing a low tier, blah, blah, blah. I, my character sucks. Like you're playing a bad matchup. If the best player of your character would lose to the person who goes 2-2 that's beating you, obviously the character's not the problem, right? It clearly can be done, like... Everyone you're losing to with your character, you think it's a bad matchup I should switch for, Shorter could probably beat them and he doesn't even use that your character. Like, obviously the character's not the issue. If you were better, you would be you would win. It, it's going to be harder. It's, it's harder to solo main, but you actually do improve much faster in the long run. And then switching. Secondary is a whole can of worms. It's actually a whole mess. Like, there's good points and bad points, but... To get when you're focusing on improving, growing, solo maining is the best way to go. That's a fact. Everyone who's been ranked, I actually cannot think of anyone who's been ranked in the last three years that got ranked with more than one character. I actually can't think of anybody. Even then, he went got mainly his game and watch. Spearwing used mainly Corn. He used Robin, and then Corn came out. Then he switched to Corn, and he kept the Robin in the back pocket. But he was already ranked. Skyler was already ranked when he picked up a secondary. So when you're already ranked or you're already good, it's much easier to pick up another character. But when you're on your way up, when your first season, I don't think, I'm pretty sure everyone solo main on their way up to getting ranked. Okay, Shane was ranked in Brawl with just Ice Climbers. Shane's been ranked for like eight years now, like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you have a problem, always go through the improvement plan before you even think of switching characters. You should go through the improvement plan like five times, and then if nothing happens, and everyone says it's like the worst matchup in the game, then you can switch characters. Like, 
it needs to be 7-3. You tried everything you can for months, and then you can switch. Because if you really keep trying, you will figure it out. And then it'll make you a much better player in the long run. The fact that you went through the process of solving the problem, you just got a lot better. Because then you got better at solving problems. You got better at learning. But if you were just to pick, you just counter pick them to a really bad matchup, that's like, okay, you won. But, like, did you, like, really get better? Or did you just, like, abuse the matchup? So you really want to concern yourself on growth and not instant results. Who cares if you lost this tournament? There's another one tomorrow. We have, like, five tournaments a week. If you count the whole state, there's, like, nine. Locals don't matter. You can always, there's always another one. We'll be playing this game for years, months, however long you want to play. It's really up to you. But it's really not a race. You can go through your time, take your time, and you'll be better for it in the long run. All right. Uh, any other questions? All right. So that's going to be it for the first part of the lesson. So I think we're going to have the practice session now. And uh, we're going to have the second half in a little bit.